everybody, this is Hua. Welcome to my channel. I am here to read part 4 of Delena. Parts 1 through 3 can be found in the videos below. And if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. This story is written in first person shifting point of view with the character's name read before the story begins. Enjoy! Jason. Okay, so I was a rude Mr. Grinch grumpy neighbor. I had to be because I was working undercover for a case that I was so close to finally putting the bastard behind bars. I never expected to find my heart working overtime in the love department. Case example, my spinster neighbor for one. For the past six years, I've been watching her from my living room window and enjoying the show. I didn't know the curves she had lay underneath those frumpy clothes she wore. Every night when she was done showering and walked into her room to wear what she called PJs, I was always dumbstruck as to why she chose the style of clothing she did. As it turned out, my brother, like the idiot that he was, turned her to Sheila's new beau and she ended up getting the hard end of the kick, literally. When O'Connor told me, I just about beat him up. I was thinking, her, fragile her, receiving the kick of a boot. God damn. I saw the bruise on her cheek, but I hadn't known it was for my own brother's doing. I didn't want to create love relationships while I was under the job. But it was hard not to when you had a neighbor like Delena. She was innocent and reminded me of a time where life was innocent. My job was anything but simple. And she reminded me of my mother's upbringing. She died a few years ago, and my father was in California with the newest piece of ass he'd landed that probably was younger than me. That left me and Connor to be each other's help when things got tough. I was always in and out of trouble before I joined the Marines, and then I went into law enforcement where Connor had the brains to be better than me. So he took that route. But in the end, the both of us... We're still just two burly brothers who tended to arm wrestle and knock each other's heads off. After Delena came to chew my head off about why I was spying on her and she got the other side of the story about her little night show, she left without another word. Tonight, when 9 o'clock hit, her bedroom light was not turned on as usual. Eh, I guess there goes my free show. She was cute and I liked flirting with her. The way how her nostrils blew up and how she got so heated that her cheeks flustered was amazing. I hadn't had a lover in years, and the last one was someone whose name didn't even bother me anymore. But I knew she was someone who carried a lot of pain. But I had seen my brother coming to visit her a few times this week. For pity or for comfort, I wasn't sure. All I knew was that something fishy was going on there, and a part of me was hoping that my brother was going to take his little visits somewhere else. The question... Did I like her? Oh yeah, what's not to like? Her green eyes that held surprises and mystery, her locks that she hid under a low bun, but when she let it down, it was like silk spilling into her hands, her body that she kept hidden under those granny clothes that had curves people paid money to get, and those lips of hers that tonight I finally got to taste. What's not to like? She was a hidden gem. I also adored her innocence. When she was embarrassed, her cheeks lit up like soft pink petals and I absolutely wanted to squeeze them. She was a definition of cute. But I had to be careful. My current undercover job was almost at an end. I was positioned here to check out one of the leading human trafficker gangs and I was beginning to gather enough evidence to slam him. I had tried to maintain my distance from her, but today when she appeared before me all angry and worked up, my male instincts told me to just go ahead and kiss her. To either knock her off of her feet or have her begging for more. I couldn't tell which was her reaction because she was stunned silent and left without another word. I did notice, however, that she changed the color of her window curtains immediately and it dimmed my view. Damn it. 
I guess the free show was now gone. Forever. There goes my nightly entertainment. The man I was chasing, Bobby Ray Lee, was a middle-aged man who worked in a prominent side of Waisara and was the CEO of the Bank of Chico. He was filthy, rich, and lived in a home that cost more than anything I owned put together. His wife, Linda, was a trophy wife who walked around with fake French nail tips and heels that could damage someone if put up their ass. Even their poodle was dressed with diamonds. That's how you know these people got money. They had no children, but on the dirty side of things, Bobby Ray ran an underground trafficking circle that sold off more than hundreds of women, some of them as young as ten. My stomach churned when I saw those photos, and I thought, if she was my daughter, I'd be taking the law into my own hands. Six years, and I was waiting for him to screw up because he already knew the image he led, so he was careful. I just couldn't find one single thing to slam him yet, and without solid evidence, no one can make an arrest. But little did I know that things were going to turn my way sooner than I expected, and it came in the form of Delena. When I think about the way we used to be, when I think about the things it took from me, I know that I am so much better, better. When I look at what I've done, now that we're apart, when I look at what I've won, I've come so far, I know I'm so much better. I watched her leave the house and walk the two blocks to her aunt's flower shop on Monday morning, and I thought, did that woman ever get tired of doing the same thing over and over? I was near breaking my balls when it came to this get up and thank God I could actually shower when I was inside my own home. If I had to keep a stench, I'd just about die. But I waited until she had walked out of view before I began following her to her shop. I'd never been one to buy flowers before. That was Connor's department, let alone getting someone kicked out of it. I laughed, remembering how Connor's face broke when he told me. I'd seen the bruise on Delina's cheek, and I did feel sorry for her, and for Connor both. When I rounded the corner and saw the open sign lit up, I walked in. Turning around, her jaw dropped open when she saw me, and I had to stifle my laugh at her god-awful green dress that was the color of puke. "'Oh, my, what are you doing here?' she asked. Isn't this a flower shop? She cleared her throat. Yes, it is. But I've never seen you buy anyone flowers before. Okay, so she paid attention. Great. I was about to use her for something better than my own brother did. I need some flowers delivered. She laughed. Oh, not you too. If your girlfriend's lover kicks me, I'm going to sue you two brothers. I laughed out loud. (laughs) <laughs> good joke. No, I don't got a girlfriend. It's for my dying aunt. Good lie, I thought. Her smile faded and she immediately felt guilty as she walked around the corner to stand behind the counter. She grabbed an order pad and squared her shoulders. I'm sorry about my rude joke, but you know your brother and so I figured you won't mind. Anyways, what would you like? Pink carnations, four dozen of them. I dug out Bobby Ray's address. Send them here. She looked at it and then up at me. That's quite far. It'll cost you some mileage. Sure, bring it up. She gave me a turtle and I paid. Then she ripped off a copy of the order for me. I purposely grabbed her hand just as her aunt walked in with her eyes wide open. I gave her my best Hollywood smile, leaned over, and kissed Elena on the cheek, surprising both women as I walked out. I could practically hear the aunt's voice as I walked back. I lose my breath whenever I see you. Delena, what the hell was that? Aunt Kate asked as she planted her hands on her hips. I stood there, shocked and a little appalled at what just happened as Jason walked out of the shop. I still had my hand in the air, and when my aunt came around to turn me to her, only then did I drop my hand and my throat suddenly went dry. She looked at me with inquisitive eyes and impatiently tapping her foot. 
Well, she asked. Well, what? I asked. She laughed. Delina, do not play dumb with me. I saw that man and what he just did to you. Who is he? So how do I begin to tell the truth? That he was Connor's brother who lived next door to me and had seen me naked for the past six years? That he was my neighbor who happened to be Connor's brother who I happened to accidentally get naked in front of without realizing? In my mind, I sounded super smart. But what actually came out of my mouth was super dumb. I'm kissing two brothers. My aunt blinked. And then she smiled. And then she roared with laughter. Oh, my dear girl. And here, I thought you had no game in you. Brothers? Is that the brother of that cheap asshole who got you kicked in the face? Yeah, I thought so. He looked like him. He's my neighbor. My aunt's jaw dropped. What? How can he be your neighbor? I've never seen him before. I swallowed hard. He, uh, he's been having a bad day for the past six years and recently just decided to clean up. Throughout the majority of the day, my thoughts were fogged with what kind of mess I'd gotten myself into. At first, I went from no men to two men, brothers, in my life. Uh, so who do I pick? Maybe I needed to talk to Aunt Kate about this since she was the one with more experience on men. As we ended the day and she was rounding up her things to go, I blurted out what I thought in my head. She dropped everything and then laughed at me. Honey, I say, make them both jealous. And whoever is the one who reaches out, you keep that one. How? I mean, I don't even know how to dress right. My aunt put her hands together. Do you trust me? I shuddered. Uh, about 25%? She shrugged. Okay, that's high enough. I say, let me give you a makeover, and then you'll begin to understand where this mess of a triangle shall take you. You know, in a million years, I never thought that I'd be the one to say this to you, but whatever you did, you go, girl. I looked at my aunt. Where am I going? My aunt's idea of a makeover included things I never heard of and things I would never have the courage to do if it wasn't for her. She cut my hair into a short bob that had me crying and then asked them to turn me into a blonde. The tears sopped, though, as soon as I saw the finished look. I didn't recognize myself in the mirror. I had a pedicure, manicure, and wax, and boy, let me tell you, that wax was not fun at all. Next up, clothes. And she had me spending an entire paycheck on clothes that I never knew my body could fit well in. I was wearing clothes I saw only actresses wore, and they were actually not bad on me. The hardest part, though, was learning to walk in heels, and whoever invented heels... I promise I will find you one day and I'll murder you because those things hurt like hell. And I could not, for the life of me, balance myself. I looked like a robot on math as I tried to glide, as my aunt called it. When I watched her do it, she was so beautiful, simply just mesmerizing. And when I did it, I felt as if my hips were going to break in several places. This is wrong, I said as I plopped down on the couch after so many fails. I can't walk in heels. It takes practice, Delena. What, you think a woman just got up one day and decided, oh, 
I'm going to strut in heels and look hot? No, honey, they did just as you are right now. I groaned. Ah, oh, I'm tired. I told you. I can't keep up with the maintenance of beauty. I look great right now, but I'm afraid if I wake up tomorrow morning, I won't know how to make myself look like this again. Aunt Kay laughed at me, and then she took a deep breath. Hmm. God, if only your mother could see you right now. She'd be so proud of you. I'm proud of you. You've gone through so much, and yet here you are, strong and happy. You are amazing. You know that? I know that we don't often discuss this topic because it's somewhat sensitive, but I just want you to know that I am really proud of you, of everything you are and what you stand for. My eyes began watering. Thank you. I think the hardest part about all this is that I don't have my mother here to help me with moments like this. But you're here, and that's what matters. Thank you for being patient with me because I know I'm not easy to work with or to love. I have my faults and sometimes they take over the better parts of me. She groaned and pulled me in for a hug. Damn it, Delena. You got me feeling all sorts of ways now and a woman my age can't be feeling these things. I'll croak faster than I expect. I pulled away and laughed, wiping my eyes. No, you won't because you're stronger than anyone I know or anything I've ever seen. Thank you. I appreciate this. This day was exactly what I needed, and I I'm excited, even if I can't walk in heels. We both laughed and hugged again. The night was young when I began my prowl to show the world what I was made of. I ended up at a bar called Moly's, dressed in tight black leather jeans and a very low-cut white blouse. Since I couldn't walk in heels, Aunt Kay gave me her low-heeled boots to wear. These were lifesavers as I walked proudly inside. I had never been inside a bar before, and the atmosphere had me choking from the smoke and loud music blaring. There were people everywhere, either drinking, playing pool, dancing, or talking quietly together in a corner. Where do I go? I scanned the area and saw that the bar stools were empty. Ah, bingo. I walked over and sat down on one of the stools, and the bartender, a big burly man with a bald head and tattoos all over his muscled arms, came to me with eyes that were sparkling. Hey doll, what's it going to be? he asked. Shit, I thought. What did one order at a bar? Before I could answer, a deep voice said behind me, She'll have a whiskey sour. I turned to find a handsome older man in his mid-fifties sliding into the stool before me. He was wearing jeans and a white button-down shirt, and a hundred-dollar smile was planted on his face. He was older, but still quite easy on the eyes. He was looking at me up and down and was smiling wider each time he met my eyes. I've never seen you in here before, beautiful. What's your name? he asked. Should I tell him my real name? I thought long and hard and thought of the first name that came to my mind. Brandy. She was a girl I envied in grade school because of her perfect attendance and popularity. Brandy. Beautiful name. Sexy, too. I'm Bobby Ray. He took my hand and kissed the knuckles. You are a tease to a man. Mm. Where are you from? Um, I'm from... Before I could finish, the bartender set the drink in front of me. I turned to thank him, and when I looked up, Bobby Ray was smiling at me with such a sweet smile that I felt my heart drop. I felt hot and decided a break would be good right about now. I excused myself and walked to the bathroom. I turned on the water and stared at myself in the mirror, not really believing what was happening. This is why women dolled up and felt the need to spend a ridiculous amount on makeup and clothes. As I sighed and took in a deep breath and looked at myself, I felt the air cool me down and I walked to open the door and who should be standing there but Jason. 
His eyes were not happy with me, and he grabbed me by the arm, literally dragging me out of the bar. Jason, goddamn woman, how could she do this to herself? She showed up all dolled up in a blonde wig and whatever the hell she was wearing, and Bobby Ray aimed right for her. And to top it off, he already poisoned her drink. When I got her outside, she was literally ripping my ears out with her screams. I turned around and kissed her silent. When I pulled back, she was blinking in shock and confusion. Actually... Whatever she did, she looked real good. I touched her hair. Holy hell, it wasn't a wig. She'd actually went and got it done. Mind telling me what you're doing here? I asked. She stepped back from me. I'm here to date. My eyebrows shot up. To date? Honey, there ain't nothing but assholes in there. Yeah, I agree because I'm arguing with one right now. I laughed. (laughs) I'm not here to date, baby. I'm here on a job. Shit, I just blew my own cover. Her eyes squinted, and then she gasped really loud. (gasps) I knew it! You're a cop, she cried. Jeez, Delena, the whole world didn't hear you. Can you repeat it just a little bit louder? She clamped down on her lips, and I felt bad instantly for yelling. I ran a hand through my hair, frustration eating at me. The look on her face told me everything about her innocence. Delena, this place is not for you. Do you know who the hell you were talking to? She shook her head. That was Bobby Ray, a trafficking ringleader. Her eyes shot open, and I saw her begin to shake. She was going to fall. Three, two, one. And when she did, I caught her just in time and sat down on the ground with her. (sighs) Oh my God, How, how do you know that? She asked. Because he is what has put me in a bad mood every day for the past six years. Oh my God, she whispered. And, and, and here I thought he really liked me. I smiled at her. Don't get me wrong. He did like you. He liked you enough to put something in your drink while you were in the bathroom. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to walk away from your drink at an open bar? She shook her head. Christ, you're so innocent. What the hell are you doing in here without any knowledge? Her eyes pricked with tears. I'm I'm looking for love, okay? I'm lonely. And I thought, well, since I got the attention of you and Connor, that I might be something decent to look at. I laughed and tilted her chin to look up at me. Baby, you are more than decent to look at. And it wasn't this get up that caught my attention. You don't need all this to catch me. Hell, I was enjoying you before you changed. She went quiet and I stood up, pulling her to her feet. Come on, I'll take you home. This isn't the place to be talking about this. What about him? He'll think you just ran off on him. I was watching her stand in her kitchen with her cup of tea and what she called PJs. She'd removed whatever she was wearing and was now back to her comfort clothes. I preferred those, although the leather pants was a nice touch. The makeup was gone, and her hair was pulled back. I had to get used to her as a blonde. She didn't look hot enough to eat right now, but she was also very new to everything. She must have sensed me because she looked up at me, and our gazes met. The look in her eyes were empty and hollow, and I knew why. She had been scarred from her very first encounter by trying to be active in the dating game. I hated men like Bobby Ray, who preyed on the innocent like Delena. It made my blood boil. Are you okay? I asked as she continued staring at me. She then broke down and began crying. She set her cup down and covered her face, bawling. I ran to her and gathered her up into my arms. The smell of the honeysuckle from her shampoo filled me and I inhaled deeply. I wasn't expecting her to smell this good. But she was beginning to look like soft comfort to me. Her sobs tore at me, and when she was done, she pulled away, a bit embarrassed as she shoved away her tears. 
I'm sorry, she said with a dry voice. Don't apologize. She looked up at me. How can you do this line of work with men who are as cruel as Bobby Ray? It's because a woman like you that makes me do what I do. You were not wrong to seek love. The only person wrong in this was Bobby Ray. She swallowed hard and took a drink from her cup. I'm so stupid. I thought he actually liked me. You're a beautiful woman, Delena. Any man who decides to turn a blind eye is the one who is stupid. She chuckled. <laughs> Tell that to the man who left me at the altar. I winced. Shit. Really? What an asshole. Tell me, why didn't you go to a bar of all places? She shrugged and answered honestly. I thought I could find someone who was different. Why don't you give me a try? The moment those words came out of my mouth and the look she gave me, I kicked myself mentally in the butt. Why I asked that, I wasn't sure. But the look she was giving me was tearing my heart apart. And also, I wanted to protect her. And if by having me around did that, I would do it. Plus, I was also going to ask her to do something I never thought I'd do. Work with me on getting Bobby Ray hanged. Inside my head, the thought was perfect because he'd taken a liking to her, which meant she'd be the perfect person to send in. I'd have to warn her of all the signs, but with the two of us working together, we'd get him. Are you seriously asking that? She asked me. I shrugged. What's wrong with me? I'm single. You are single. And we're both humans looking for warmth at night. Why suffer alone when we can grow together? Delena laughed. <laughs> you should have been a salesman. Laughing, I replied. So, what do you think? Her silence wasn't very reassuring. But when she looked up at me with hooded eyes, I knew her answer. But she needed some slight help in pushing in my direction. I knew that she was the type of woman who would never ask for anything, whether she wanted it or not. So I stepped forward, pulled the cup from her hands to sit down, and gave her a kiss that was sure to send her thoughts of doubt vanishing. I could feel her body relax against me, and when I pulled away, she slowly opened her eyes and finally let out the breath she was holding in. God damn, man, you can kiss. Is there a school that teaches you that? She asked. I laughed. I'll take that as a compliment. Let's just say I've had practice. Yeah, I figured. Do you know all types of women? In my line of work? I do. I can tell you anything from the way she holds herself right down to the panty she wears. I saw her face flush, and when she didn't answer, I continued. You, for example, have been hurt so you tend to watch where you put yourself. You don't like to interact with people because conversation seems to work not too well with you. But your heart is a place where hurt lies, and only a good man can melt that ice around it. You don't like to be cornered with deep thoughts or answers that require too much details. You would never wear anything lacy underneath your clothes, and you go only with cotton briefs, all white, no colors. You prefer to wear spaghetti-thin strap tops with those white cotton briefs as PJs, and your eyes have gold flecks when you think really hard. I watched as her jaw dropped open and she blushed. I smiled, crossed my arms, and leaned against the counter, waiting for her to answer. The silence in the room was thick, and she finally cleared her throat, loudly, even though I knew she didn't even need to. Okay, I'll give you a try. But if you get me pregnant, you marry me. I leaned forward and extended my hand to her. Deal. Thank you so much for tuning in. Part 5 will be up shortly.